Today I got a brand new Lenovo IdeaPad 3. I'm going to do an upgrade on the memory and the SSD and I'm going to show you how to do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new Lenovo IdeaPad 3 uh, laptop. Uh, I'm going to do a little modest upgrade on it. Right now it currently has 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD and 4 gigabytes of memory. Uh, I'm simply going to add four more gigs of memory, get it up to eight, and I'm going to go from 128 to 250 on the SSD. I'm going to put in a brand new Samsung 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 drive. It's 250 gig, really good drives. Use them all the time. And I'm going to add another four gig stick of DDR4 memory to get it up to the eight gigabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off the laptop. This is a pretty modest little laptop, but it's got the Ryzen 3 30, uh, 3250 processor in it, the Radeon graphics, there it's off. So now I'm just going to flip it over. I've already taken out all the screws. Um, these four screws along the front edge here are, all, are one length, they're real short. I can see I've got it laid out over here on my little trusty magnetic pad. And all the rest of the screws are all the same length. Um, so I've already removed those, don't want to bore you with that. So just be careful when you take them out, you get the right screws back in the right holes. Like I always say, a long screw in a short hole is not good. So I'm going to use a plastic spudger tool here. And I'll have a link down below where you can buy a pack of these online, pretty cheap. So I'm going to get right into this little seam here. There's a seam anywhere along the edge. I usually like to start in a corner, get it in there good. And just start working it around. Just got to be patient when you're opening these up and always protect yourself against static discharge. Just got to be gentle around where the ports are on the side. You don't want to booger anything up on the side of the chassis there. So you can see it's already started coming up. Putting a little upward pressure on it. You can hear the popping, which is good. Just don't stick anything in there really far because you got speakers and other components you definitely don't want to damage. So now that I got it start, oop, I got it started here. Once you get get it going, they're not too bad. And along the back, you could just pop it up, but you kind of don't want to do that. You can break those little plastic studs in there. Going along the back here with my plastic. I'm using all plastic tools. There. So now we got got that off. It comes off just like that. So now I'm going to flip it around here. And even though we're not going to be doing a whole lot in here, I am going to take a minute and disconnect my battery. I want to discharge any residual juice that might be hanging out in there. So what I'm going to do here, if you can see the battery connector here, this pulls out of the socket here, just pulls straight back this way. So I'm going to try to see if I can get my tool under it. These are a little tricky sometimes to get a hold of. I know my hands are probably in the way, guys, but kind of can't be helped. There, see I pulled it back away, put a little pressure on the wires. Got to get it out of there. So now we're disconnected. Uh, just take your time with when you're disconnecting that. You don't want to damage those wires. I'm going to open it up really quick here guys. And I'm going to hit the power button underneath here just a few times. Make sure it's all discharged. Uh, that should be good. All right, so here's our empty RAM slot. That's where I'm going to put my 4 gig stick of DDR4 2400. It, onboard memory is 2400, so this will be the same speed. Just going to pop that in the slot. Make sure you get a good click on the sides there. And over here is our NVMe or our um, M.2 drive. They got the little short 2260, I believe, in here. You take up the thermal pad. Save it, if at all possible. If not, yeah, I'm not worried about that. So, there's one screw right here we got to take out. Hold it up so you can see it here. 
Got to take this screw out here, and there's a little nut, a little stud underneath here. We got to move down to the 2280 position down here, so we can put the to accommodate our our longer drive. Okay, let me get that screw out of there. You got your antenna wires here, and this one's got to make sure those aren't in the way. So there's that. So there's the one we're taking out, okay? And so this is the little stud here. I got my little trusty custom-made tool I made to get these little guys out here. Sometimes getting it threaded back in is a pain in the butt, so bear with me. You can see that or not, but it's super tiny. Just got to get it threaded back in this other hole right here. Sometimes I get lucky and get it started on the first try. Not usually. Ah. I know I'm in the way here, guys, but I can't help it. I'm right-handed, so. I just got to get it started here. All right, sorry about that. Got it started. Just tighten it down. Probably finger tight is all you really need. <clears throat> all right. So now I'm going to put my brand new empty drive because I am going to do a clean install on this. Now you could clone this, do it with a cloning process. There's lots of ways to do it, but in this case, I'm just going to do a clean install of these Lenovo's. It's pretty simple. Should have mentioned that when I started. So. Gonna mount it back in there. Now there's, here, let me take it back out. On the bottom of these, they got a copper heat plate over here on the bottom to spread out the heat. So I don't think I'm gonna use thermal pad on this because this label across the top also serves as a thermal pad. I'm not gonna worry about this. this is not a gaming laptop at all. So it's gonna work just fine like that. Get my screw back in there. All right, so that was pretty quick. We got our extra four gigs of RAM. We got our new 250 gig SSD. Our wires are still okay there. Got our battery. All right, so we can put the bottom back on it here. Got pretty good ventilation along the bottom here where our heat pipe and our cooling fan is. So we're gonna put the battery connector back in. So these can, and again, you gotta be patient. Just gotta tuck it down there and. Now, once you plug this in, be careful. Don't be touching anything in there with your metal tools. So just make sure it goes in all the way, which it did. Now I can put this back on. We should be good. I'm gonna snap this back in place, guys, but I'm not gonna put all the screws in. I never do until I'm basically done, just, just in case something went wrong and you have to open it back up. You never know got a bad part or something like that. So I'm just going to gently squeeze this back into place. There. So now let's open it up. And I'm going to use a USB drive with the Windows 10 on it. You can create the, make one of these for free. Just got to download the Microsoft Media Creation Tool. I'll have a link down below where I got a video on how to do that and make one of these. So I'm just going to pop it in a USB port. And it should default to that for booting. If not, we can get to the boot menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it back on. I'm gonna do a clean install. Like I said, I'm not gonna bore you with the whole complete install, but they go pretty quick. I got my bootable flash drive in there. It should, computer should default to that for, for booting. Cause we got that brand new bare drive in there, obviously. I'm just gonna let that go for a second. Make sure it boots. There we got a little, Spinny circle thingy. So we're going to choose United States, install now. You know, kind of a budget laptop, and now instead of having that low amount of storage, see these types of laptops, more and more of these laptops that are under like 500 bucks are coming with Windows 10 in S mode, which I have a video on how to 
get rid of that as well. So we'll have to, I'll have to get this out of S mode once I'm done. Even with the clean install, it's still going to be in S mode. So I'm going to hit next. I'll choose custom here. There's our unallocated brand new drive. I'll hit next. And we'll start the Windows install process. But they put 128 gig SSDs in these lower priced laptops and even some of the more expensive ones for that matter. Um, they, they ship them in Windows 10 S mode because in S mode, everything you're saving basically is going to your OneDrive, which is on the cloud. And all the apps you're going to use are out of the Microsoft Store, which typically don't take up a lot of space. So by doing a little upgrade like this, giving you more space, a little extra RAM, now we can, we, we can convert it to full Windows 10 and you can use it like a normal laptop instead of a overpriced Chromebook, so to speak. So I'm going to let this part go here, guys, and I'll get back to the end, and I'll get into Windows real quick, make sure all of our stuff is where it's supposed to be. So we'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, I just finished installing Windows. Didn't have any issues. Went really quick, so we can get rid of our flash drive. But let's just check real quick here on our drive situation. Here's our new 256 gig drive instead of our little dinky 128. And I'll go into the task manager real quick. And now we got eight gigabytes of 2400 megahertz uh, memory. So nice, simple little upgrade. Went really quick. I'll get all the drivers and Windows updates. A uh, couple of things I'll get from Lenovo for like their hotkeys and things like that. But yeah, it's really that simple. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And you all have a great day.